Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today I'm doing my best books of 2019. So these are all the books that were my favorite ones that I read throughout the year of 2019. I'm super excited about this video because obviously these are the books that I loved the most throughout the year. Hopefully I'll be able to be like semi-coherent <laughs> talking about these books and how much I love them. I feel like this year I definitely had some books that had just like exceptional writing and that is part of what got them onto this list. Of course there are other elements about them um, that got them onto the list, but I feel like this year was just like a really want good one for like books with really great writing. Also, a lot of the books on this list are from the second half of the year because the first half of the year I was kind of having a hard time um, picking books that I would really like. And around August, I think I made a video that was about how my reading habits had changed and how I kind of had gotten into bad habits of like how I choose which books to read. And I wasn't picking up the books that I was actually most excited for. So in the second half of the year, I tried to actively uh, like try to pick up books that I was really excited for and I really thought I would absolutely love. And to some extent that really worked because most of these favorite books are from the second Second half of the year. So let's get started. First up, I'm actually going to talk about some honorable mentions and then I'm going to get into the best books of the year. So these honorable mentions are ones that I really loved but may not have quite gotten into that top tier best of the year. But the honorable mentions are not going to be in any particular order. So the first one that I want to talk about is actually a whole trilogy which is the Curse Worker trilogy by Holly Black. Um, so the first one in the trilogy is White Cat. The second is Red Glove, and the third is Black Heart. Um, and so this is a series that I actually listened to these all on audiobook, but I ended up loving them so much that I decided to buy the physical copies as well. This is set in a world very much like our own, except that there are curse workers. So curse workers, um, each person who is a curse worker has a specific ability. So there are memory workers, there are emotion workers, um, there are lots of different kinds of curse workers, um, and they require skin-to-skin contact in order to uh, like remove memories from someone's mind or manipulate their emotions or things like that. But using curse work is illegal in this world um, and so a lot of the curse workers end up as part of like um, the mafia or like the mob um, and they end up in criminal activity because their very existence has kind of become illegal. Um, our main character is part of a curse working family but he is one of, he's the only person in his family who doesn't have a curse working ability. So he's trying to kind of create his own life and have a life separate from the mafia, the curse working mafia. Um, but he does have some uh, dark things in his past that he is also kind of trying to run away from. Um, and this series was just so much fun. I binged this whole series. I listened to all three books in like four days or something like that. And like they're not very long, but still I just listened to the entire trilogy in just a couple of days and really enjoyed it. So this got on the list just for like pure enjoyment factor. The next honorable mention that I want to talk about is Disenchanted, The Trials of Cinderella by Megan Morrison. This is the second book in her Time series, which is a middle grade series of fairy tale retelling. Um, and I read the first and second book this year. The first book was also really good, but this was definitely my favorite of the two that I have read. And there are a few reasons in particular why this one was my favorite of the two. One of which is that I thought this was kind of a clever spin on the Cinderella retelling. Um, Cinderella is not usually my favorite fairy tale, but I thought this one was a really interesting version of a retelling of it. Um, and I liked the main character in this a lot. I think that she started out a little bit annoying to me, but I think that her character learns and grows a lot throughout the series or throughout the book. Um, and one of the way, one of the things that I like about the way that she grows is that she doesn't change who she is. She doesn't change her beliefs or values or convictions. She just learns more about how to like work with other people and she just grows a lot without changing the core of who she is and I really liked that about her character. But probably my favorite thing about this is that each of these books tackles a larger issue. It's not just 
a retelling. Um, and so the first book, which is a Rapunzel retelling, talked about like toxic relationships. And this one really focuses on uh, like workers' rights, safe workplace practices, and even like fast fashion and the impact it can have on workers. And I just thought it did it so well. And I think it just did such a good job of making you really empathize with these characters. And I also really like that it has this element of hope when addressing these issues, which I think is something that can be very true of a lot of middle grades, but I think that this did an especially good job of it, um, that it not only like brings up these important issues and makes you feel more connected to them, but also then makes you feel like you could do something about it and makes you feel like there's still hope and that you could be proactive and that it's not hopeless. And I just thought it was done so well. Um, so this was really fabulous. My next honorable mention is Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is the first book in the Founders trilogy, uh, which is an adult high fantasy trilogy that follows our main character, Sancia, who is a thief and she's an especially good thief because she is able to touch objects and hear like what is their purpose and also like what have they experienced or what are they experiencing so she can tell like by touching a safe what's inside the safe or touching a wall. She can tell if there's somebody on the other side things like that. Um, it just has such an interesting magic system. I have a full review for this book that I'll link below if you want like more information about it, but this also just turns into a heist um, and I just really enjoyed this one. The first half of the book was a little bit like rough for me. Second half I just could not put it down. I actually ended up listening to this as an audiobook. I started it as a physical book and his writing style didn't really work for me so I listened to the audiobook and loved it as an audiobook because that plot <laughs> gets so good. Um, so I would highly recommend the audiobook for this because the writing style may not work for everybody but the world, the magic, and the plot are just amazing. I'm so excited for the rest of this series. And my last honorable mention is The Tea Dragon Festival by Katie O'Neill. This is actually the last book that I read in December, the last book of the year. This is a graphic novel about tea dragons. So there are these adorable little dragons that grow tea leaves on their horns and you can like make tea out of them and then they have the tea has like magical properties to it. And this is the uh, prequel companion to the Tea Dragon Society. But the Tea Dragon Festival, I loved this even more than the first one. The first one was also adorable. But this one, for one thing, we learn about some new types of tea dragons because they're the alpine tea dragons um, because this is set in the mountains. And they are just even more adorable than the dragons from the first book. Um, I also love that this has more of like a nature setting because they are in the mountains and one of the main characters goes like foraging in the forest for food and I love that and it had beautiful illustrations of all of the nature and it's just so beautiful. This one also was surprisingly funny. Like while I was reading this I actually laughed out loud while I was reading it and like was just having so many reactions to things that were happening. Um, and I also just really loved the message of this one that was really about valuing your own contributions. This is just so sweet and so wholesome and I loved it so much. Alright, so now we're gonna get into my favorite books of the year. I have four books to talk about and I'm not going to kind of have them count from like least to most because I don't know how to order them. I'm just gonna kind of talk about like the lower two of the favorites and then the like top upper two of the favorites. Um, and I'm probably going to be repeating myself because there were certain things that I consist that these books have in common that I just consistently loved across all of them, which is kind of why they ended up in this favorite books of the year category. All right, so the first one that I'm going to talk about is one that I just recently read, which is The Queens of Innisleer by Tessa Grattan. 
This is an adult high fantasy that is a standalone. It's a retelling of Shakespeare's King Lear, um, but in this one it's focusing more on the three sisters instead of focusing on the king. And I absolutely adored this book. It could be a little tough to read at times. It's a very dense read, um, but it is beautifully written. It has amazing atmosphere. The island that it is set on, Innis Lear, has its own kind of consciousness and people can communicate with the island. There's nature magic in it, which is just written so beautifully. There's even like the language of trees so that people can speak to trees and communicate with the island. Um, and I just loved the nature magic elements of it, but really I loved these characters so much. These characters are so complicated <laughs> and they are the way they're written they just feel so real and so raw and you can really just understand them and their motivation so well and all of them pretty much like they make bad decisions they do terrible things but you can still sympathize with them and you still care about them so much and i just absolutely loved all of them reading this was just very emotional for me. There were definitely parts in it where I was just like, I was just like making noises <laughs> while I was reading this because I was just like, oh my god, I can't like, uh, I can't handle what's happening right now. I also really loved all of the like relationships and dynamics between these different characters um, and especially between the sisters. Their relationships were really interesting and the two older sisters, their dynamic was really interesting and I loved how dedicated they were to each other. I haven't done a review for this one just yet, but I will be very soon. Um, and Tessa Grattan, I really want to read more from her. I just really enjoyed her writing and her characters so much. I feel like she has the potential to be a new favorite author. I feel like all of these authors that were, that are in my like top books of the year have potential to be new favorites. But the only reason this is kind of in the lower tier of favorite books of the year is because it could be a little bit of a slog to get through sometimes. It's very densely written um, and it just, it wasn't like an easy read. So I definitely like loved it. It just could be a little dense, a little tough to get through at times. The next book that I want to talk about is The Lost Queen by Signe Pike. This is the first book in the Lost Queen trilogy um, and it is historical fiction that is following the sister of the man from history who inspired the stories of Merlin. Okay, um, but his sister was a real queen, but there's not a lot of information about her, and so Signe Pike has kind of given her more of a story. This is set in medieval Scotland, and in this, our main character really wishes to become a wisdom keeper, which essentially is like a druid. Um, so she would love to be a wisdom keeper and a healer, which of course I love anything with healers. <laughs> um, but she is really faced with a political marriage um, because she has to be the one to kind of secure her family's future. But the man that she is going to marry is a Christian prince. Um, and so that creates a lot of conflict for her because this is right around the time when when Christianity is coming into Scotland and is kind of trying to suffocate the old ways and establish itself as the new power in this land. And our main character is trying to not only, you know, politically preserve her people, but also culturally and spiritually preserve their way of life. And this book was so well written. <laughs> I loved the writing in this so well so well. I loved the writing in this so much. Of anything that I have read, this is probably the most similar book that I have found to a Juliet Marillier book. So I feel like that can tell you something about how much I loved this. Again, this has really great atmosphere and especially atmosphere of the natural world um, because our main character, she follows these like druidic traditions. Their spirituality is really centered around nature. Um, so, so much of her life and her spirituality takes place like in the forest um, and she wants to be a healer and so there's so many elements of like nature and atmosphere that I absolutely loved in this. Um, I loved the main character. She is one that I just became so attached to. Her struggle of having to like sacrifice 
what she wants from life in order to protect her people was one that just like broke my heart <laughs> you know this storyline of you know a young girl who does not want to be involved in a political marriage is one that's very common in fantasy and in historical fiction um so it's one that i've seen a lot but i have never been so upset by that plot as I was reading this book there because I loved this character so much and there's just something about the way that it is written that you could just feel the like unfairness of it that was just maddening. And the only reason that this one is kind of in this like lower tier of favorite books of the year is because there was a romance trope that I don't really like and I have a full review for this as well that I will also be linking below. All right so now we're into the top tier of my two favorite books of the year and these two aren't in a particular order but the first one I'm going to talk about is Middle Game by Seanan McGuire. Um, I feel like this shouldn't be any surprise but <laughs> this is a standalone that is about these two twins Roger and Dodger who have been created by an alchemist who is trying to harness the powers of the universe by personifying them in human form, which is Roger and Dodger, um, as a way of gaining unlimited godlike powers. So our main characters, these twins Roger and Dodger, are kind of personifications of language and math. And the two of them are being raised separately at the beginning, um, but they have this kind of psychic connection and over the course of the story they just kind of find each other again and again throughout their lives because they are two halves of a whole and they are continually pulled together. Um, and it's sort of about them figuring out this conspiracy in their lives and like what has been going on, how they were created, um, and then figuring out how to deal with that. Um, I don't know how to explain this book. These top two books, both of them are ones that I'm like, I don't know if I can explain what they're like until you go into them. But I loved this so much. It was so weird, <laughs> but it was so good. This book was not like anything else that I have ever read but it was just so fascinating. In this, Sean McGuire's writing is incredible. It's very different from the writing from like the last two books I was just talking about, um, but I've read her Wayward Children series and really enjoyed those, but this one is on a whole nother level. Her writing is on a whole nother level. It's just incredible. This story also does an incredible job of balancing the known and the unknown, giving you parts of a story and these characters that you feel like you know and you care about and you can be so attached to um, so that there's something to hang on to but then also holding these mysteries that you really just may never understand. Like some things we get answers to but some things I feel like I'm just never going to know. And it's not a book that has a really tidy ending, it has this kind of open ending but I feel like that really suited the book. I loved these characters, Roger and Dodger. I just cared about them so much and I felt so connected to them. They're both like incredibly powerful and brilliant, but also just like sweet little beans. I just want them to be okay. Um, and I just loved them so much and I loved that like how connected the two of them are because they really have this feeling of like they belong together. They are two halves of the same whole and I loved their sibling dynamic and this book was just indescribable and incredible and it is just, it gets dark and it is brutal but it is masterful. Um, and again, I have a full review for this. I will link it below if you want like more information and that also includes like content warnings and stuff like that but this is so incredible. And the last book that I'm going to talk about is The Binding by Bridget Collins. And I was going to say that I feel like this one should also be no surprise, but you know what? I feel like I have not gushed about this book enough, but this book is another one that is just indescribable. <laughs> I'll tell you the premise, but I feel like it really doesn't explain what this book is about or what it's like. But this is a story about bookbinding. But in this world, Bookbinding is very different from what it is in our world because 
bookbinders are able to remove memories from people's minds and bind them into books. And bookbinders view themselves kind of like doctors, that they're amputating memories or bad experiences as a way of alleviating people's suffering. Um, and then that memory is able to kind of be tucked away in a book. And so people have these memories bound because they are the worst experiences, the memories that they cannot continue to live with. In this, our main character is Emmett. His family owns a farm and he's just always grown up on a farm. And his family is very against bookbinding in their community, in this world. Bookbinding is considered very taboo, but Emmett learns that he can bind books, he can bind memories, and so he goes off to learn how to do this and how to bind memories. But while he is apprenticing as a bookbinder, he discovers a book that has his name on it, which means that at some point in his life, he had a memory removed and bound and he doesn't know what it is. And discovering that really turns his world upside down. And this book, again, is just so hard to explain because it takes some twists and turns. It's in three different sections and each section is so different and feels so different, um, even in the way that it's written, the perspective that we have as we're reading it, the pace, the tone, all of it just feels so different throughout the story. So it's one that you really have to go into it just knowing that it's not gonna be what you expect it to be and it's going to change as it goes. It's not going to be consistently the same thing throughout the book but it is so amazing. While I was reading this, I was obsessed with it. Like I was trying to tell anybody who would listen to me about this book because it was just like consuming my mind. <laughs> this is the one that really got me into the idea of finding more books about books. Um, it also has gotten me interested in reading more books that have memory as a theme. I think that one of the things that was so interesting about this is that it's not just about books or about memory, it's really using like the binding of memories as a way of exploring human nature and the ways that some people take power as a way to help others and some people use power to abuse others. It just is so interesting and I loved these characters so much. There's a male-male romance in this and Bridget Collins writing, I don't even know how to explain it because while I was reading it I was just like so obsessed. I didn't have the like distance or perspective to really analyze why I loved her writing but I found it absolutely enchanting. As I said, this book I was like obsessed with it. It just like took over my life while I was reading it. Um, and it's one of the only books or maybe the only book that I read in 2019 that I had that kind of like experience where it just consumed me while I was reading it and I could not put it down. And after I finished this book, like I couldn't even just like let it away from me. I kept it like in my bed with me for like a week afterwards, like sleeping with it in my bed next to me after I was done reading it, just because I could not let it go. And I had like such a book hangover from this because I felt like my mind could not disengage from this story and this world. It was just incredible. I will link below my review for this if you want more information about it and that will also contain, you know, content warnings and everything like that. But this was incredible. So that is all for my favorite books of the year. Let me know if you have read any of these, if you also love them. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!